Hi there. I'm going to start a question off for some of the students that are working on trying to determine electric field strengths and directions. So I've set up a question where we have two charges, A and B, that are positive 2 millicoulombs and uh, negative 3 millicoulombs, respectively, and I've got them 10 centimeters apart. <coughs> Excuse me. The question would be then to determine what the magnitude and direction of the electric field at some point farther away, 10 centimeters north of B. So we've got them 10 centimeters apart and a point that's north of that, and I want to know what's the magnitude of the electric field. Well, our electric field formula can be defined as the electrostatic constant K times the Q that is generating a char or a field divide by how far you are from that source charge, D squared. So because of A, there's an electric field around A, and at a point P, which is a good distance away, it would be 14.1 centimeters if you were to do Pythagoras' theorem with the two tens. So at 14.1 centimeters from, from A, there's an electric field, but there's also an electric field because of B, and that you're 10 centimeters. So at point P, you're 10 centimeters from B, and there's an electric field. So I'm going to draw vectors or arrows that show the direction. The uh, direction of electric field is always which way a positive charge would move. So if I have a little positive charge here, and A is a positive charge, I know that like charges repel. So the electric field direction, because of P or because of A, is off in this direction at that angle, and that's the electric field because of A. Now the electric field because of B is a positive here, negative there. This P would be pulled downward towards, or the electric field direction would be downward towards B. And so your goal is to determine what the length of those vectors are using this formula, and then how to add those two electric fields together. And that's a vector exercise, which I have other videos that would show you, but I'll still work it through. Okay, so oh, I think we're ready to start. We're going to work out E A first and it is k, and the constant k is 9 times 10 to the 9, times the qa that is making up this, and it's 2 millicoulombs, 2 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, divide by the distance between a, which is the 0 0.141 meters, and we square, because those are in centimeters, so 0 0.141 meters. So we need to bring up and calculate what that electric field is. So we'll bring up the calculator and take a look. So we've got, turning it on, 9 times 10 to the 9 times 2 exponent negative 3 divide by 0 0.141 squared gives us uh, 9 times, what's the large? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so 9.05 times 10 to the 8 newtons per coulomb. 9.05 times 10 to the 8 newtons per coulomb. That's what the electric field because of A is. Okay, so we'll bring this up. We'll uh, hide that one for now. So now we need to figure out what, oh, we lost our EA. 9.05, what happened there? I don't know. Times 10 to the 9. Or times 10 to the 8, I mean, newtons per coulomb. I don't know why that disappeared. Okay, now we'll do the same thing for EB. Work out what its uh, electric field would be. So 9 times 10 to the 9. The charge is 3 millicoulombs times 10 to the negative uh, 3. Divide by that distance squared. And so if we work out its charge, We'll now bring up the calculator again, slide it over. So we've got 9 exponent 9 times 3 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0.1 squared. And you get 2.7 times 10 to the 9. Okay, so 2.7, we're good this time. 2.7 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. So now what we have, we have two different vectors uh, being that we have to add together. EA, this one on the angle here, is 9.05 times 10 to the 8. 
and this guy that's straight down is 2.7 times 10 to the 9. Okay, we'll squeeze it right in there. Now, how do you add those two vectors up? Well, we can't, since they're not in a straight line, we can't just add them up numerically. What we have to do is break them down into components and take a look. So I'm going to see if I can grab this vector and how much of it. Okay, so that vector I can take down here and consider it as one vector and EB as another vector. So we need to take this 9.05 times 10 to the 8, and we have to break that up into X and Y components. So if we break that into X and Y components, we need the angle. Well, what's nice about this triangle is that you've got a 10 centimeter and 10 centimeter sides, so you know the angle. It's the isosceles triangle, so it's 45. So to get the X and Y components of EA, we would call it EAX and EAY. Again, I go through this in another video if you want a little bit of help at it. Uh, 9.05 times 10 to the 8 times for X, you would have the cosine of 45. Okay, so we're going to take the 9.05 times 10 to the 8, uh, second entry, and we're going to multiply that by cos of 45, and we get 6.4 times 10 to the 8. 6.4 times 10 to the 8. And since it's an isosceles triangle, 45 degrees means the two sides are equal. So we have 6.4 times 10 to the 8 here, and 6.4 times 10 to the 8 there. The EB, remember, is still um, 2.7 times 10 to the 9. Now, this direction is all in the y direction. There's no x component to this vector. So to add up the vectors, you need the total x, and there's only one x that we're dealing with. There's only one x component, 6.4 times 10 to the 8. Our total y component of the electric field is the upward 6.4 times 10 to the 8 and a downward 2.7 times 10 to the 9. And you have to end up subtracting those two and we get a negative 2.06 uh, times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. Again, it's the same units everywhere. So my total x component is over 6.4 times 10 to the 8. My total y component is down uh, 2.06 times 10 to the 9. We need to work out the resultant. So we do Pythagoras theorem on those. You square this, square that, and take the square root. So we take our 6.4 times 10 to the 8 squared plus 2.06 times 10 to the 9 squared equals square root of the answer gives us 2.15 or 2.2 times 10 to the 9. Okay, 2.2 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. That's the strength of the electric field. And the direction of that, you have to work out what that angle would be. Just bring up my time. Still got a bit of minutes. So we can figure out our angle in here. You take the tangent, would be opposite 2.06 times 10 to the 9 over the adjacent side, which was 6.4 times 10 to the 8. And you take inverse tan of that fraction to figure out what the angle would be. 2.06 times 10 to the 9 divided by 6.4 times 10 to the 8 inverse tan of the answer gives us a 73 degree angle. So at 73 degrees, so our direction was 73 degrees. We went east first and then south. So we would call it that the electric field is 2.2 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb directed east 73 degrees south. Okay, I hope that helps you out. I know it was a little fast, but these I only have nine minutes or ten minutes to deal with with, uh, with uh, these questions.